before we get into this case, we want to extend out our thoughts and prayers to the loved ones and friends of Faye Swetlick, who fell victim to the tragic events described in this case. Today's case is taking us to Casey, South Carolina, where a beautiful little six-year-old comes up missing. Faye was a sweet, little, bubbly girl with a huge personality. She would light up the room, and she was born in June 13th of 2013. She was a very lively girl, like most kids, and she had lots of energy to burn. Selena, her mother, would call her her magical little fairy. She always wanted to play and have fun. Her mother had said she loved everyone, everything, and always wanted to be happy as she was. That her daughter would always be the first one to give a compliment even to random people she'd never met before. We couldn't go anywhere without her stopping three or four different people just to compliment them, be it their hair or if the color looked good on them. She always wanted to make new friends. She did go to Springdale Elementary School, and on this day, it was like other days. She'd went to school on February 10th, 2020. Then she got off the bus and was dropped off at the school bus stop where her mother, Selena, was waiting for her at 3 p.m. Then they would walk home, just talking about their day. As they went home, Faye went inside her house to get a small snack before going outside to play in the front yard like she always has done before. One of the neighbors had said that they saw Faye running towards a shared fence with the Napa Auto Parts store. This was between 3.30 and 4 p.m. As Selena went outside to check on Faye at 3.45 p.m., in doing so, Faye was gone, nowhere to be seen. And Selena went over to the neighbor's house. Maybe she was over there. They might have seen her or where she went. As panic started to set in, she did make several calls with no luck. Then she dialed 911 at 5 p.m. Right, you tell me exactly what's happening? I can't. I can't find my daughter. She was playing outside and I wanted to find her. I, I Okay, how old is she? She's six. She's going to be seven in June. All right. All right. I'm going to stand on the line with you, but I'm going to get KCPD on the line, too. But I'm going to stand on the line, so don't hang up, okay? Okay. All right, ma'am. You're on the yes. phone with Casey. Go ahead. Yes, ma'am. Can you tell me what your son's name is? Uh, my daughter's name is Faye Swetlick. F-A-Y-E. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. All right. What was the first name again? Faye. Faye, F-A-Y-E? Yes, ma'am. Okay, what's her last name? Swetlick. Spell that for me. S-W-E-T-L-I-K. Okay, and what was she wearing? Uh, she was wearing uh, polka dotted green boots, uh, um, a flowered skirt. Okay. And um, yeah, a, black, a black t-shirt that has um, a neon design on it. How long has she been out? Um, last time I, last I saw her, probably about an hour ago. How tall is she? Oh, uh, she's three foot ten. Three foot? How much does she weigh? Oh, uh, sixty-five pounds. Alright. You last saw her in the front yard. You didn't see which way she went or anything like that. No, she was just right in, right, right in front of my front porch. Just minutes later, the police arrived. It didn't take long, about 5.30, they were there. They had 50 
responders that would be on the scene. Then by 6 p.m., the FBI would be called in. There would be an investigation launch. As the news spread of her missing, the community started to look for her. Everyone was concerned on where she was at. The police had told the volunteers to let them handle the search for Faye. Then Chad Switlick, Faye's father, was told of Faye being missing, and the FBI went over to Chad's house to search it. She was nowhere to be found, and later it was confirmed by the cell phone records that at the time that Faye's disappearance, he was at home. The officers had went door to door in hopes to find Faye. They told them if they had security cameras to check them and turn in any footage. It comes to checking on those home security cameras. That's something that uh, we're already doing. Certainly we'll be going, uh, continue to go door to door and, and then even revisit some of these doors a second time. Ashley Hunter, a spokesperson for the city of Casey, asked that the community continue to share recordings with law enforcement. People in the community, uh, in the Churchill Heights community, if you have uh, home security systems, uh, ring, wise video, anything like that, talk with our investigators and, and let them reach out and, and obtain some of that video. The FBI started to look for Faye in the air with helicopters and also the ground with canines. With all the officers involved to the search for Faye, they all came up empty. Then Chief Byron Snowgrove from the Department of Public Safety, he had said that there was not enough evidence to say that she had been abducted and also that Faye's disappearance did not meet the criteria for the Amber Alert. The next day at 7 p.m., there was a hotline set up. Almost over 300 tips had come in to the police department, and they would follow up on every single lead and still found nothing. There was over 250 officers and investigators that had come around the country were now involved in Faye's case to look for her. They had put up roadblocks around the Churchill Heights area in search for Faye. They searched every car or truck coming in or out. It now had been 24 hours since Faye was reported missing by Selena, her mom. Still, no sign of her anywhere. The press conferences was held to share more details of the case. We gathered here for one thing today, and that's to find Faye. The last time Faye was seen, she was wearing a black shirt with the word peace across the front of it. The photos that you have, her hair is a little bit longer uh, than it is today. We're trying to get pictures of that. It's been cut to about shoulder length of just above. Faye's parents are anxiously awaiting her return. What we would like to ask is that you hold on to a phone number, 803-205-4444. And we specifically ask that the residents of Churchill Heights here in Casey, who have cameras such as surveillance cameras around their houses, uh, uh, doorbell cameras, ring doorbell cameras, anything like that, anything that records and have any type of recording on their devices between the time of 2 and 5 p.m. yesterday, please call us at that number. Let us know that you have that recording. We'll come get it, look at it, and it may be key in us proceeding with this case. Now again, we're here for one reason, we're here to find Faye. The investigators still did not know if Faye was taken by someone or just simply walked away and might be lost or even injured. As time ticked by, it started to look more and more like an abduction instead of her just getting lost. This morning for missing six-year-old Faye Swetlick. The last time we heard from investigators yesterday evening, they told us that they are following up on every lead and asking for help from the public to help bring this little girl home safely. The police had released the bus footage to show everyone what she was wearing on the day that she came up missing in hopes to bring more leads. 
Now, the day that she came up missing, she was wearing a polka dotted rain boots and a black t-shirt with the words peace on it. The police and detectives on the case had interviewed many people, including Selena and her boyfriend, Carter, also Faye's father, Chad. The detectives had said that they were not ruling anyone out at this time. One of the detectives said that there is no clear suspects. One by one, a Faye's family were cleared. After searching their homes, analysis on their phone records, and their alibis, every one was ruled out. Detectives saw some of the CCTV footage on the day Faye came up missing. There was two images that they had released on February 12th, but later both owners of the cars were cleared. Still, no sign of Faye anywhere, and no clues either. Now, Thursday, on February 14th, there was a regular scheduled day for the garbage bins to be picked up and emptied. The police wanted to do a quick check one last time before the garbage had been taken away to find any evidence or clues. As they searched the bins around the Piccadilly Square, they had found something at the number 602 apartment. They had said that they found was critical. Whatever they did find, it did lead them to the wooded area behind the auto parts store. The detectives and police, and of course the search teams for Faye, they would remap the route and the area that they needed to search. It was less than a half an hour later that the search for Faye would come to a very tragic end. Byron started to look once more in the wooded area. He had finally found Faye in a shallow grave. She was less than 200 feet away from her home. It was later that the coroner had said that she had died of asphyxiation, and it was just within hours after he was being abducted that she was not killed where her body was found. Just a minute after finding Faye, there was a call at the Piccadilly Square. They found a man in his house, dead on the patio area, with a knife lodged in his neck from a self-inflicted wound. He was not identified, and the police had kept this quiet, not knowing if there's any link in these cases. Since our last briefing this morning, we've had several developments to share with you. It is with extremely heavy hearts that we are announcing that we have found the body that the coroner has, has identified as Faye Marine Sweatland. We are now treating this case as a homicide. As this community has been working hard to find Faye and bring her home safely, we wanted you to know as soon as possible. At this time, no arrests have been made. You need to know that this is a fluid investigation and that we are working diligently on it. We also need to inform you that during the course of our investigation, a deceased male was located in the Churchill Heights neighborhood. That investigation has just begun. At this time, we feel there is no danger to the community. We will continue to provide more information as it becomes available. We will not be taking questions. Thank you. After being told that Faye had been found, tributes came in flooding and many who knew and many who did not know Faye had rallied around the family for support. All I could think of was my own kids. If something were to happen to them. Oh, I think it was terrible. Um, I feel bad for the family. I feel bad for all the people involved. The former vice president, Mike Pence, had given his support to the FBI and the police as they continue to investigate the case. As your vice president and as a father, let me say, we were deeply saddened to receive word this afternoon that the remains of Faye Swetnick, a six-year-old girl who went missing from her parents' front yard just three days ago had been found. A few moments ago, I spoke on the phone with FBI Director Christopher Wray, and uh, I have assured Governor McMaster that he will continue to have the full resources of the federal government made available in this investigation. They had identified the man that they found in his house. It was 30-year-old Cody Scott Taylor. Cody was a general manager of 
the Wingstop location in West Columbia. He began his employment there in June of 2016. Many were asking, who was he? And was there any link to Faye? After a little girl disappeared from her yard, investigators are now revealing more details about her death. Police say that the body of a man found in the same South Carolina neighborhood is connected to the death of six-year-old Faye Swetlick. Many who knew Cody had said that he always had a negative outlook on life and was known to be a loner. Cody had described himself as someone that, quote, lived without hope, was asexual, and an incel, unquote. He did have a roommate that he worked with at the restaurant. His roommate has said Cody has expressed feelings of depression, and he mostly kept to himself. He did enroll at the University of South Carolina at the Columbia, and he studied mathematics. They could not find no record of him actually graduating, and according to some people, he dropped out in 2009. He did not have any police record, just only a few traffic violations. The police had found that he had moved between jobs a lot, but he was working at the Wingstop alongside his roommate at the time of his death. As soon as the police found Cody's body, they started to put things together between him and Faye over the next few days, even though there was really no connection that they knew each other. But the evidence that they found in the bin that they said was critical to the missing Faye, it was found in the bin that belonged to his home. According to the police and investigators, this is what they have said that happened, according to the CCTV and also the DNA evidence that they found. On the day Faye was playing outside, the investigators are not sure if he had lured her away or just took her. In any case, he had asphyxiated her in the matter of hours after abducting her, and he had concealed her body in his apartment over the next couple days. The investigators did search the place twice, but did not find her. On the day Faye came up missing, the police had went over to Cody's home to check to see if Faye was there. Cody's roommate was there, but Cody was not. They had talked with the roommate and did take a look around and they did find a full laundry bag in the house, and the roommate did state that it was Cody's, so the police took a DNA sample from it. As they kept searching the house, they did notice that there was a missing persons poster laying on the table. After the search of the home, the roommate had gave the police on his whereabouts on the day that Faye came up missing, and his alibi did check out, so the investigator had left the house. Now his roommate had remembered. He said that Cody had returned from his work on the day the investigators were at the house and that he had been acting strange. The roommate would soon realize that since Faye came up missing, that the apartment would have a strong odor and a really odd smell. But he just thought it was some kind of cheap air freshener. He just thought that Cody was trying to get rid of the smell of weed. His roommate did think it strange that he would start using an air freshener when he never used it in the past. In the follow-up search, the investigators wanted to talk to Cody, and they went to his home, and he was there. And they did ask him about his whereabouts, but he was unable to give them a strong alibi. He had told them he was home laying down sleeping, and that he was alone. The investigators left, not finding anything out of the ordinary in his home. Now the police had went to the auto parts store and they got the CCTV footage and it did show them and the officers going through the woods looking for Faye. Then on February 13th, around 1 in the morning, it shows a light coming from the same area that the police had just searched. There was someone captured moving around in the dark and using some kind of light. Later, it was determined that it was Cody. Then, about six hours later, the camera should show Cody that he was walking, going to Walmart. Then, 
The cameras also showed him going to the garden department. For about 20 minutes, he had told the employees that he was doing some gardening when asked. In talking to the roommate about the gardening, the roommate said he never had any interest in gardening at all. The employees at the Walmart garden department said that Cody had grabbed some random seeds and that he paid for three bags of soil and fertilizer at random and a Pop-Tarts and then left the store. Then he got a ride share through the app and that the driver said that Cody made him feel very uncomfortable, that he had asked him if he was doing some gardening and he changed the conversation. As they were driving, they had passed some police and the media. They were out looking for Faye. He then had asked Cody if he knew the little girl and he said, no, I don't. I don't know her. I never met her before. Then at 7.47 in the morning, about 40 minutes later, the same camera at the auto parts store that picked up the searchers and the person in the dark now was capturing Cody with a bag of soil that he bought at Walmart. And then he went in the woods where he had buried Faye. He had stayed there for about a minute. Then it shows him heading back down to the hill with no bag in hand. As they searched the bin at Cody's home, they did find a child's polka dot boot and a ladle that was covered in dirt. After they saw the footage and finding all the evidence, they had went back to the woods to do another search. The CCTV footage shows the moment that Byron discovered Faye's lifeless body in the shadow grave with a white trash bag wrapped around her neck. Alongside her was her other polka dot boot. Then on the same day, they had found Faith. Cody had stood on the back patio and slit his throat with a knife. Then his roommate had came home and he was the one that found him and called 911. When the coroner had conducted the autopsy on Faye, they did find Cody's DNA under her fingernails, and also her DNA was found on the ladle along with Cody's. The investigators believe that Cody had acted alone, and he was the only one involved in this murder. The laundry bag that was open that belonged to Cody, the DNA results showed both Faye and Cody's DNA was in the bag. It was announced that Faye's funeral would be paid by the funeral home. On February 21st, a public memorial was held for her. That was Faye Svetlick's favorite song. And it was a somber night for the city of KC as the community said goodbye to the six-year-old who captured the hearts of so many. Trinity Baptist Church opened its doors to hundreds who came to pay their respects to faith. And before the service tonight, people lined the streets for this procession from her home in the Churchill Heights neighborhood to the church. Its colorful tow truck carried Faye, her mother, and her pink bicycle to the service. David Bates is the owner of Diligent Towing in Lexington. He's also a neighbor and friend of Faye Swetlick's family. So he reached out to Faye's family and asked how he could help. He offered up his pink tow truck to escort Faye's mother and her ashes to Trinity Baptist Church for her memorial service. The community's come together 100%. I mean, we're all blessed to be a part of this. The pink truck towing Faye's bicycle on the back joined dozens of motorcycles and tow trucks for the two-mile procession to the church. One by one, motorcycles and trucks pulled into the church, greeted by hundreds more there to show their respect for the little girl who made a big impact during her short time here on earth. Faye will be somebody that we remember for the rest of our lives. The first responders, hundreds of people, including everyone involved in Faye's case, had come to pay their respects to this little precious six-year-old who stole the hearts of many, many people. 
who were wearing pink and purple, which was Faye's favorite color. Selena would say that the sparkler, the better. They did put out a journal so people could write down a few words or even draw a picture with colorful pins because this is what Faye loved to do. A year later, the authorities would finally close this case. We will never know why Cody murdered Faye due to that he killed himself and he never left a suicide note. There had been no motive established why and most likely we'll never find out. Multiple agencies had tried to access Cody's phone with no luck and there was no evidence that was found on his computer either. Even though the local police had concluded this case, the FBI has not. It's still ongoing as review by the State Law Enforcement Division. Then, in July 2021, the director, Byron, had now since retired after serving 35 years in law enforcement. He did play a vital role in Faye's case on finding her and getting her home. He had said, for me, after 65 hours of searching, the memory finding the small body of Faye, Marie Swetlick, in a shallow grave on the morning of February 13th of 2020, will never ever leave me. This tragic case has taken a toll on the officers who were dedicated to finding her. Nearly one year later, they haven't forgotten. The disappearance and murder of Faye Marie Swetlick immediately became and always will remain incredibly personal for each one of us. The Springdale Elementary School where Faye had went had unveiled a buddy bench that they had dedicated to the memory of Faye. The eulogy for her daughter, Selena, had asked the people continue to honor Faye's memory through love, something she said was the most important magic. She had asked them to be a little more like Faye, to be more kind, to compliment a stranger, to dance in the rain, and to stop and smell the flowers. Just show a little bit more love to everyone you meet. The death of Faye had a profound impact on the family and friends, and also the community that she lived in. They will, for a long time, remember what had happened to this beautiful, bubbly, bright little girl. Well, this is it for this case. Thank you so much for being here with me. Until our next video, please take care and be safe.